In this lesson, we will look at one of the most widely used and most important equations in water resources engineering, known as Manning's equation. To present a bit of background, let's remember the Chessy equation. In the Chessy equation, the Chessy coefficient c varies with each stream or channel. Antoine de Chessy did not propose a method for calculating his coefficient. Therefore, many attempts were made to determine his Chessy coefficient c. One such attempt was, de was developed by Ganguly and Cutter and resulted in the formula shown in the slide. We're not going to go into details of this formula. However, note a couple of things. The Chessy coefficient is seen to be a function of the longitudinal slope s, the hydraulic radius r, and a new term n. This n term came to be known as Cutter's roughness coefficient, and it depended on the material of the channel. During the late 19th century, hydraulic engineers attempted to find an empirical relationship to calculate velocity on channels. Most of these attempts only managed to find relationships for specific channel or flow conditions. As an example, this set of equations, developed by Philippe Gockler, found the relationship of the velocity to be equal to some coefficient lambda times the hydraulic radius elevated to an exponent times the longitudinal slope elevated to another exponent. The exponents of the hydraulic radius and the slope as well as the coefficient lambda varied with the slope. It wasn't until Robert Manning, an Irish engineer, compared several of the already existing empirical equations and found a following relationship. Manning's relationship was identical to one of Gockler's formulations. He eventually discarded this equation in favor of a dimensionally homogeneous relationship shown in this slide. Now, we're not really going to look at Manning's most recent equation because it was his initial equation, the simplified form of velocity shown above, that eventually made an impact in the civil engineering industry and eventually kept being used to this day. Manning noticed that the reciprocal of his constant k was consistent with Cutter's roughness coefficient, and he noted this in a letter. However, he never proposed that his equation be used using Cutter's coefficient. Later literature in the early 20th century presented his equation using Cutter's n, and it took the following form. Through dimensional analysis and looking at this equation, we can find that the dimensions of n are time over the cubic root of length. This will be important in a second. Manning's initial equation, which used his k coefficient, was presented in English units, so any values of k that he may have found would have been in English units. However, Cutter's n values were measured in metric units. This means that when Manning's equation was published using Cutter's n, that equation would only be valid for metric units. In order to convert Manning's equation back into English units, a conversion factor was necessary. This conversion factor was given the variable of lowercase k. In some literature, this variable is lowercase c. This k coefficient is equal to 1 in metric units, or 1.486 in English units. This is because for every one cubic root of meters, there are 1.486 cubic root of foot. This was because for every one cubic root of meters, there was 1.486 cubic root of feet. Let's compare Manning's equation to the Chessy equation. The Chessy equation relates the velocity to the Chessy coefficient c, the hydraulic radius, and the longitudinal slope. Manning's equation relates the velocity to the Cutter's roughness coefficient, the hydraulic radius, and the longitudinal slope. If we combine both equations, we can find a value for the Chessy coefficient c and relate it to Cutter's roughness coefficient n. The roughness coefficient 
also known as n, used to be called Cutter's Roughness Coefficient. However, in the United States, it is known as Manning's Roughness Coefficient or Manning's n. In fact, in my years working as a water resources engineer, I've never heard the name Cutter. It's always been called Manning's n. This roughness coefficient varies with channel material and flow depth. But in engineering design, typically only channel material is considered. This roughness coefficient is found empirically, therefore laboratory and field measurements are vital for determining the N coefficient. The following table shows some commonly used N values in civil engineering design. These values can be found in literature, mainly books, journal articles, and websites. However, the values that are mostly used in the civil engineering field come from Ventichau's open channel hydraulics. His values are used extensively in civil engineering design. However, these values may be modified to account for pipe conditions. The flow rate can be found using the continuity equation. Knowing that flow rate is equal to the product of average velocity times the area, we can multiply Manning's equation for velocity times the cross-sectional area to obtain the following expression for flow rate. Typically, these values will not be very accurate if the slope is very high. Also, these values apply to steady uniform flow. However, they may be used in unsteady flow using several methods. It is important to note that these values assume one-dimensional flow. As a final note, let's recall that Manning's equation is the most used flow equation in civil engineering design, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. The classical n values published by Venti Chao in the 50s are still accepted and used to this day. Typically, Manning's equation applies to water under standard engineering conditions, but it can be used for other fluids as long as corrections are made. And, as a fun fact, this equation was derived theoretically in 2001 at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign.